Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for Live in the D in the Green Room. And today I'm hanging out with Meredith Breckner. Hi. We had a great time co-hosting the show together today. So much fun. Such and a good show today. It was. It was so much fun. Yeah. And you ha were talking about libraries and what there is to do there. One of my favorite places in the world as a kid. Yeah, yeah, libraries, and especially in Ann Arbor. So we feature the Ann Arbor District Library today. Mm -hmm. They have several branches around town, and you, there you can check out like literally anything. That was amazing. They brought board games, like this crazy intense telescope, a disco ball. You can check out tool. Like it, they have everything you need, and they're also a wonderful gathering space. They have tons of activities for all ages. So it's just Ann Arbor District Library. There's a reason it's rated five star for mm -hmm. 15 years in a row. I love it. You yeah. had a chance to chat with them. Yeah, love it. Nice. And if you're looking for something entertaining to do, the library may not be the first thing that comes to mind, but you may want to give that another thought. That's because libraries are not what they used to be. There are all kinds of things to check out and enjoy beyond the great books for free. And we're joined by Shalanya Zobel with the Ann Arbor District Library to get an idea of what some libraries may be offering these days. Welcome. And first, we want to congratulate you. The Ann Arbor District Library is just one of only two libraries in the country to earn a five-star rating from Library Journal in each of the last 15 years. So congratulations. Thank you so much. For that as well. I love this library. Um, oh, we hear some applause. Nice. And you say uh, there's something for everyone at the library and brought some examples of, you know, what your library offers. So take us through some of these really cool things we're seeing here. Sure, sure. So let's get started on the end here. You see, we have some party lights. Like, we really do have some for everybody. Yes. It's not all books and being quiet at the library these days. If you like to be outdoors, we can help you out with telescopes so you can get that really good look at the night sky. I love uh, this. And if you're more of someone who likes to hang out at home, we have plenty of games. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of fun things for you to do with your kids. You know, one of the benefits to using a library for things is when they make oh, all these hey. fun noises, you get to take yes. them back. We're thinking about the public all the time <laughs> with our choices. <laughs> That's right. If it's too loud, just send it just back to the library. Pop huh. it off. Huh. We have sewing machines. Nice. Um, huge games that you can play. Like mm -hmm. if you have a wedding or you're having a birthday party or something like that, Giant Jenga got, has you covered. Love it. Um, interested in podcasting? We have podcast kits. This is one of the microphones that we circulate. So um, cool ukuleles mm -hmm. and maybe you're just looking for something new to hang up your on your wall spruce up your space that's what our art print collection is for get out of town you have an art print collection we sure do public, and it's totally free to well prepaid with your tax dollars really. okay that's amazing and you guys have like tools i mean my husband has has checked out tools from the library but there's just so much to offer and in addition to these things that you can check out do your libraries also offer programs and special events so many programs almost every day we have something going on at the library we try to have things for kids like traditional story times and yeah. things like that we have our sewing lab where we basically have a classroom full of sewing machines where you can learn with instructors that we bring in and we have a couple large events coming up we have something called Ann Arbor Fiber Arts Expo hmm. so if you're into knitting weaving anything that has to do with fabric that's an event for you and then we also we don't forget about the books either yeah we have our Washington Read coming up it's our library and most of the other libraries in the county and this year February 5th uh, such a fun age is the book that Kylie Reed will be um, discussing as a part of the read I love it. And for someone who has never visited a local library or, you know, hasn't in quite some time, how can they find out what's available? It's so easy. You can hit the website. For mm -hmm. us, it's aadl.org or just show up at one of the libraries. There will always be people who are waiting for new users to show, show you everything we have. Yeah. And how does someone get a library card? Um, it's so simple. You just show up with your ID that shows that you're in the district, fill out a form, and you will leave with your card. That's so cool. You know, Ann Arbor District Library, or AADL as Ann Arborites call it, it's just been such a haven for me, like with little kids. You know, you have the story times you mentioned, um, and also your West Side branch has a coffee shop inside, and <laughs> you can grab a coffee and, like, take your kids to the play area, and, like, genius, genius for parents on the weekends. Uh, <laughs> so, so just to remind us again um, where you know we can find out information about about you guys and people can check you uh, out www.aadl.org. Awesome, I love it. And to learn more about places like the Ann Arbor District Library and other things happening in the Ann Arbor area, visit the website allaboutannarbor.com, which is made possible by these sponsors. All right, and we also got on the butterboard craze today on Live in the D. This is what I created. It's beautiful, Tati. Thank you. This it looks really good. With a cat um, from 
Oh, time and honey. Time and honey. Thank you. She was delightful. Yes. And a great personality. And we put this together. And so here's the thing. I'll be 100% honest. I saw butterboards on TikTok. Yeah. Some weren't looking so good. She knew how to make it look absolutely beautiful among yeah. other kind of boards. Which one was your favorite? Yeah. Ooh. You know, not necessarily for the look, uh -huh. but... but to eat or to consume yeah. the Bloody Mary. I mean, th the fruit board was beautiful, mm -hmm. but the Bloody Mary board was really cool. I think that's something very different that could like jazz up any party that would, people would just true. like navigate to. What, what do you think? I don't know, I can't decide. Mm. Why don't you guys take a look and then mm. you can pick for yourselves. Well, are you ready to impress your friends and family with a creative and delicious spread at your next gathering? Well, charcuterie boards have become a huge hit, but now food board sensations have gone to a whole new level. Just look at what you're looking at. To share the latest trends, we are joined by Chef Kat Shapiro Warneck, the owner of Time and Honey. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having us. And thank you for all of this beauty that is before us as well. This is so Absolutely. pretty. I could not come and not show up without food. I mean, thank you. We, th <laughs> we thank you in advance, of right? Course. So Kat, why do you think that food boards have become so popular? I think it just creates a sense of community and gathering. Mm -hmm. And I think food is the one thing that brings everybody together, no matter your culture, race, religion, what types of food you like. So I think it's a fun way to explore new options, but also just create community and bring people together to eat. Yes, and we're ready to come together. Yes, aren't it's we? been too long. Yes, so TikTok also certainly helped make butter boards go viral. Yes. And now we are going to uh, make our very own right here. Yes. What are your suggestions for building a great butter board? Um, because I've seen them done very well and yes. I know you're going to show us how to do it. And there's some that are not so great. That's right. Um, but I would recommend starting off with something that is high quality, right? Okay. So whether this is from your local farmer, cheese maker, from the farmer's market, mm -hmm. uh, we're using Applewood smoked butter from Boss Mouse Cheese in Northern oh. Michigan. So Time and Honey is all about supporting local makers and all of that, so Love it's really it. important. So I would start with softened butter, which you can see, I'll we've let this it. come to room temperature. Okay. Um, and then what you're gonna do is kind of break it up a little bit, Tati. Okay. And then we're gonna place it on the board. And then like smooth it out? You can smooth it out with your hand if you want, or I have really warm hands naturally, okay. so I tend to use a spoon ah, okay. and kind of just smear it around if you yeah, want to use Yeah, why was that. I using my hand? That well, was it's weird. Okay. Okay. It's okay. No judgment here. <laughs> so you're going to smear it around until you get it kind of evenly distributed. You don't mm -hmm. have to go the whole perimeter of the board, but and just enough. it doesn't enough. have to be perfect, right? Yeah. It just has to be like Just enough consistent. to get it, exactly. You don't want a huge lump of butter that you're going to be scooping up, but you want to get all of the flavors that we're going to be adding. Okay, so this is my type A personality. It's okay. Out. Sorry. Okay. Are you like a like symmetrical symmetry kinda, person? Kinda. Okay, okay. Okay. So once you get to that point, and I'm just gonna push this out a little Help bit more. Out. Thank you. No, no worries. <laughs> um, you want to think about your toppings. So winter is kind of dreary in Michigan, and we don't have a ton of produce. But I can tell you that we still have fresh herbs, and um, radishes are plentiful. There's some great toppings, like you can use a spicy chili. Nice. Uh, this is from Trader Joe's, but this is just an Italian chili that's chopped up. And then you're kind of just going to scatter it throughout the board. I like this. In the little pockets. And you can Very make this nice. savory. You can make it sweet. sweet. Mm, that's what I was just thinking. Yes, you could do like a cinnamon sugar, some honey on there, you know, like the old school cinnamon mm -hmm. sugar board that our parents used to give yeah, us. Absolutely. And I love how you said to start with high quality ingredients. Yes. Because it doesn't matter how much you zhuzh it up or how pretty you try to make it if you're not starting with really good ingredients yes. to begin with. We're not going to put some country crock butter on no, here. No, no, no. I'm no. sorry. We're going to do it right. <laughs> so now we are going to finish up jazzing this one up. There, there's some other creative food boards that you have here in front of us and that yes. are out there. Let's go through these. These yes. are just beautiful. Can we start with this one? Yeah, so this is actually a Bloody Mary board, um, which we've never debuted before. Uh, but this would be everything that you would find on a delicious Bloody Mary. So we have some salami, um, we have some grilled shrimp, we have some charred bread, we have beautiful. bacon over here in the corner, we have assortment of pickles and olives. Um, mm -hmm. And actually from Gus and Gray, we have a Bloody Mary jam, which Ooh. is a local Michigan company. And some kind of pastry. Yeah, we have our there. famous brunch boards. This is our sweet board. We have our fruit board, which is just um, seasonal fruits. We have our uh, crudite board, which is all fresh veggies and house-made dips. And then our famous cheese and charcuterie board. Just gorgeous. The use of color, everything is just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And tell us about uh, Time and Honey and how people can find you on social media and how they can order from, from yeah. you. So we um, are a gourmet food company specializing in, obviously, all of these boards that you can order. And 
and get delivered, but also catering and events, um, in-person events, as well as dinners. And we're opening up a, br a brick and mortar in Detroit come this summer as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Time and Honey Food and timeandhoneyfood.com on the web. Kat, thank you so much. This thank is when you, you want to show off. Yeah. This is what I, I wish <laughs> to have and come in. Why don't you have some right. of my board here? Yeah, right. no, it's awesome. Kat, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me. And of course, you know, we've got you covered on all things entertainment on Live in the D. We had Local Force Style Editor John Jordan on with us today. And we were talking about Golden Globe fashions. Yeah, that was so much fun. Who was your favorite? So what was a hit for you? A hit for me was Jenna Ortega mm -hmm. and Angela Bassett. I loved mm -hmm. both of their outfits. They looked they were. spectacular. I liked the red one that he didn't like. Yeah, also. that wasn't terrible. I didn't think it so. It wasn't so bad. How about you? Um, I think Michelle Yeoh was my favorite with that sort of like the navy uh, peplum classic Hollywood cut yeah. dress. I thought that was beautiful. And I didn't think Michelle Williams was that bad either. I didn't need it, but what do we know? We're I not the logo for style editor. We are editor. not John Jordan. Yes. So. <laughs> See what he had to say. That's so true. We're like, you should look nice. Right. But that was okay. <laughs> Well, before the hardware was handed out in Hollywood, some of the stars had already won the red carpet, and some unfortunately had people talking for their not so great looks. Yeah, it's always right. a toss up, right? Right. And joining us now to share his hits and misses, <laughs> which I'm he did, looking he forward to. Cards going like this. <laughs> As everyone knows, that is local for a style editor, John Jordan. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning for most of the people. For most of up. the people. All yes. right, well, let's start with your winners of the night. And okay. this is in no particular order, right? Yeah. So let's start with the Golden Globe winner, Angela Bassett. So she was chic and sexy in mm. silver sequins. Say that Gorgeous. fast. Um, and what I love about what she's doing, this is, the line is so simple. It's a spectacular mm -hmm. fabric, but it's so simple. And sometimes you just don't have to have a lot of detail. Th this dress is Pamela Rowland, mm -hmm. who is from Michigan, oh. originally. You know, she's west side of the state, but graduated from Michigan State. Nice Very local nice. connection. I love that. That was beautiful. And next up, Jenna Ortega, who ditches the Wednesday black. A lot of people are saying she was one of the biggest winners yep. on the red carpet. What do you yeah. think, John? Ooh. Well, I mean, just everything, like her hair and her makeup and this dress. The dress is really complicated. This is by Gucci. Ooh. But it's, I think what, you know, kind of made it all work was the muted color. So it just, mm. it wasn't like too much spectacle, you know, you kind of were, it was more intriguing than it was, uh, you know, ostentatious. Mm -hmm. I very like it. It's beautiful. Muse-like, yeah. yeah. right? Very beautiful. very beautiful. Well, another winner of the night, both on the stage and the red carpet, you like what Michelle Yeoh chose. Yeah, and so, you know, oh, she's wow. embracing her 60s, which you know, everyone should 60s? do in their 60s. Oh my gosh, she looks amazing. Uh, and this is by Armani Privé, and it's this is if you can see the the bottom portion of it. I'm not sure if we'll get a shot of that or not. But there's a peplum that's kind of like a bubble cut, Ooh. and so um, that's a that's a silhouette that that a lot of people can wear. Uh, and I believe it was navy. Okay. It's beautiful, a classic Gorgeous. Hollywood silhouette. I mean, it's, it's throughout the decades people mm -hmm. have been wearing this look. Yep. And Jennifer Coolidge had people talking for what she said in her acceptance speech. Now, you think people should also be talking about what she wore. Well, yeah, but, I mean, she looks beautiful. Yeah. This, you know, Dolce Gabbana, and she was making a crack about, you know, how she, you know, probably should have worn um, Crocs with it so that she, <laughs> she was worried about the wax floors. Yeah. And you know how oh, she no. just, her stream of consciousness and that chatter of hers is so endearing. But anyway, she just, I love her. She, I love her. her and her she speech, looked beautiful. She did. Her speech was hilarious. <laughs> and now to some misses, and we'll start with mm. Lily Jane. Kind of misses, okay? okay. Not like, the problem with this is that, first of all, this she swallowed in this. This is Versace. Um, and it, when there were close-ups, like, she has this, you know, tiny, tiny, envious mm -hmm. waist. But it, the way that the dress was cut, it was kind of nipping at her waist, and it was creating, like, these bulges where there aren't any bulges. Mm -hmm. And so fit is the first rule of fashion. Mm -hmm. I also think, though, that sometimes 
something looks amazing in person and it doesn't translate well on camera I think as we all know sitting up here yeah, yeah and, That's true. and people you know think they don't think about like studio lighting and mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. it's like oh this looks great in my showroom right Right. right, right. But I guess kudos for taking a chance, right? Yeah. Taking a risk and doing something, mm -hmm. something different. And Michelle Williams seems like a perennial nominee. You know, this year her ruffled look yep. uh, ruffled your feathers. <laughs> so she, and she was amazing in the Fablemans. Wow. Um, I think, again, this is a little bit excessive. This is mm. Gucci and, you know, I think she looks ransacked by ruffles. Oh my goodness. That's, <laughs> That's hilarious. Alliteration. Said there. I still feel like I bet you in person this looked amazing yeah. and then on camera, I don't know, I just want to wear something like that and walk around. Remember, we're going to meet we, Meyer with some crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, yeah. <laughs> we, have this we, we have a whole plan. Uh, yeah, we do. All right, finally, Billy <laughs> Porter always makes a bold choice and sometimes it's a hit and sometimes it's a miss. He's hmm. so talented. I think he's a really handsome man. Mm -hmm. I, but here's the thing, uh, it, you know, you are invited to the Golden Globes and a guest, and Billy's scale is always, it's like four guests. Mm. And he was in the front row and he had his, you know, um, train. His, his, yeah, his mm -hmm. gown train, you know, and it was, artfully, uh, you know, dis displayed in the front, but people, it was a, it was literally a tripping hazard. Oh, wow, um, okay. So it, I just, I think you have to be aware of your circumstances and, and be courteous. I agree, I can't agree with that. Well, thank you, John. I'm an adult and I still love a brand new pair of pajamas, yes. don't you? I love that, yeah. totally. So Maybe. cozy and nice. Aren't they? They yeah. just make you feel, I don't know, there's something about them. Yeah. So today we had on Jammies by Jamar, which is a nonprofit here in Detroit, Metro Detroit, I should say, that collects pajamas for kids who may not have them. I think that's so cool. And, and new pajamas. New pajamas. New pajamas so that kids around the city can have that feeling that yeah. we all know and love. I agree, I agree. He just wanted to give back, so take a look at what he had to say. Well, as the new year begins, many of us take time to reflect on the past and set goals for the future. But what about bringing in the new year by bringing in some kindness? Giving back to our communities is the ultimate resolution that doesn't require a gym membership or a strict diet plan. And a Detroit native has made it his personal mission to improve the lives of those in need. And we want to welcome Jamar Bray, founder of Jamar's Jammies, to share some, some of his insight on yes. making a difference in your community and your nonprofit organization. Thank you for being with us. No, thank you, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, definitely, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Well, we're grateful to have you here with us. So tell us about Jamar's Jammies and how the idea came about. Yes, yeah, so Jamar's Jammies was created in 2018. Um, just for the fact, I just want to give back in my own special way. Um, I know Coats for Kids and Toys for Tots, um, those are great organizations, but I wanted to give in my special way, uh, my nickname on my baseball team at the time was uh, Jammy. So okay. uh, that was kind of like a light bulb went off in my head for pajamas and I used to love pajamas as a kid. So that was one thing I just wanted to be able to give back in my own special way. And it's five years later, this is where we're at. So it's really All a right. blessing. So five years started in 2018. What's been your favorite part about running the organization so far? The reaction, I mean, the love and the support we get, I mean, just for a simple pair of pajamas to go so far um, mm -hmm. from the Children's Center, the way we were able to give to them, the Kids Kicking Cancer, that organization, that is such an amazing organization. Also, the different partnerships we've created with All Fields Hitting, Baseball Academy, and uh, Authentic Hair Design, those different places where they're able to actually have our bins for Jamar's okay. Jammies. So those have been such a blessing for me and for the people around. All right, so just for clarity, you get the jammies and you do what with them? Yes, yeah, so once we collect those pajamas from the community, we also, at that point, we are distributing them. So we look for shelters, we look for organizations that are looking for donations. Uh, we also donate to the Children's Center, which is mm -hmm. amazing, amazing place. So they have been our sponsor and our uh, donation site since 2018. So since the first Jamar's Jammies, the Children's Center has been with us ever since. That's awesome. Now you kept saying amazing, amazing, yes. right? So what are some of the benefits that are derived from giving back to the community? As much for the recipient as it is for the giver, right? Yes, so for the giver, you know, you feel that togetherness for the community. Um, and that's what all I preach is just 
how to be a part of your community in your own special way. So you might not have a million dollars to give back to your mm -hmm. community, but just a simple pair of pajamas can go so long, you know, so far. Um, but the fact that it brings awareness to different causes throughout uh, that people need, and that right. that means so much to me to be able to bring light to pajamas. That's, you know, <laughs> no one ever thinks about that, but the fact that I'm able to do that and, you know, this is just the beginning, it means a lot. I mean, let's be real, a fresh new pair of pajamas can make you feel like a million oh, bucks definitely. when you're a kid, you oh, know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. Don't let it have something cute on it like some of these oh, Trust here. me, I try not to steal a couple of them as they get donated. So <laughs> I, I, I believe to, it. I try to stay away from them. I'm, I'm a little bit too big for a couple of these now. <laughs> but they're cute. I, mean, yeah. I remember it brings back your feelings from childhood, yes. doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so can you provide information on drop-off locations for donations in Metro Detroit? Yes, yes. So we have bins all over the Metro Detroit area. We are at... Uh, all Fields Hitting Baseball Academy, which is in Southfield. We also have Authentic Hair Design, which is in Northfield. And then we also have a partnership with my church, uh, Greater Grace Temple. Um, Bishop Charles H. Ellis and Veronica Phyllis over there has helped me to develop a bin over there. And I am so thankful. So we have those locations that people can actually come and drop off those uh, pajamas. Okay, excellent. Now, where can people find out more information about your organization online, social media, and so yes, on? Yes, so you can always find us at Jamar's Jammies. Uh, that's Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we are uh, building up our social media uh, clientele, but we are uh, building up slowly, but it's very, very effective um, to get our message out quicker. So Jamar's Jammies on Facebook and Instagram. Excellent. So get involved. Make a donation. Maybe you can volunteer. Who knows? Jamar, thank you so much for being oh, with thank us. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Meredith, for hanging out with me on the show today. Yes, thank you for having me. It was a blast. It's always it so much a good time. I know, <laughs> Jinx, we said it at the same time. <laughs> and thank you guys for hanging out with us for Live in the D in the Green Room. And we'll yeah. see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. on Live in the D.